We are closer than ever to stopping polio. In 2015, the number of wild polio virus cases reported was the lowest ever, and one of the strains of wild polio was declared eradicated. In nature, polio can only live in human bodies and in the environment for a limited amount of time. But we also have given the virus a home in laboratories and vaccine production sites in our efforts to achieve eradication. While wild polio virus type 2 has been eradicated, it still exists in some of these facilities. An important part of our work to sustain a polio-free world is to make sure that these facilities handle and store viruses safely and securely. And this process is called containment. Poliovirus containment will minimize the risk of polio being accidentally or deliberately released into the wild. With the eradication of type 2 wild polio, now is an important time to make sure all type 2 viruses are appropriately contained. Once wild polio type 1 and 3 are also eradicated, we will do the same job to safely and securely contain them. In 1978, during the drive to eradicate smallpox, an accidental release from a laboratory in the United Kingdom led to the death of a woman. Because of this, the smallpox virus is now only kept in two official repositories. The remaining stocks were either destroyed or transferred to safer laboratories to stop leaks like this from happening. We need to make sure that there is no inadvertent release like this with the polio virus. So we must also reduce the number of places where the virus is stored. Making sure vaccine-derived poliovirus strains are also properly contained is important to prepare for the global removal of the type 2 component of the oral polio vaccine in April 2016. This will reduce the protection that children have against type 2 polioviruses. Therefore, it will be critical to make sure none is leaked from any facility. The first phase in achieving poliovirus containment is to make sure we know where the polioviruses are. Countries have been asked to identify all of the facilities that hold wild poliovirus type 2. Once they have this information, countries will encourage facilities to destroy the type 2 materials that they don't need. However, some of the virus will need to be kept for vaccine production or for research. In the second phase, the facilities that need to keep the virus will have to prove that they can meet strict containment measures so that no leak can take place. These facilities will be regularly assessed to make sure they are meeting the containment criteria. All of these actions are very important in order to keep current and future generations safe from polio. As we work to secure a polio-free future, we share a global responsibility to make sure that the job is done properly. Containing all polioviruses is a critical part of that job, and the work will only come to an end once all polioviruses are destroyed. Thank you for watching.